taking advantage of her like many may have done in her past. He looked to give her something that would change her life forever for the better, and that was living water. Yeah. When you look back at our text beginning at verse number 10, you see the conversation taking place. Jesus told her if she knew the gift of God and who it was that saith unto her, give him to drink. He said that she would have asked him of some drink, and he would have given her some living water. Yes. This woman said that he didn't have anything to draw from the well with. So where you going to get this living water? Then that's when verse 13, Jesus says, Whosoever drinketh of the water of this water shall thirst, shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, he shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting life. He was offering her something more than just the physical. He was offering her something that was going to satisfy her spiritual. And don't you know that's really the essence of who you are? When it gets down to it, it ain't the physical that's going to please you. Because everything that's physical is temporal. And the temporal will not last forever. And so Jesus was offering her something better than just the physical. Because what he had in the spiritual realm would quench her thirst forever. And she would be a much better person. Amen. So she saw in him a sensitive man. But not only did she see a sensitive man. But she saw a spiritual man. She saw a man who knew all about her past and still dealt with her like she was a lady. Amen. Come on in the room, Amen. Jesus. Yes, the Lord knew exactly who she had been Amen. with, how much time she had spent with who she had been with, okay. and yet he still treated her like she was a lady. Amen. She saw a man that was anointed or chosen by God because Jesus was trying to help her and not hurt her. He was there to fulfill the spiritual duties of his father. Right. And that's what spiritual men do. Mm -hmm. Very spiritual men don't try to conquer individuals according to their flesh. Mm -hmm. Because they're too busy walking according to the spirit. Yes. Listen, listen to what the Bible says in verse number 28. The woman after talking to Jesus forgot the reason why she came to the well in the first place. After having a conversation about this living water, after coming in contact with this spiritual man and with this sensitive man, she went back to the city and said, come and see a man. This man has told me everything I ever did. I know he's the one that we have been waiting on. She understood something about his spirituality. It was something about his character. It was something that radiated from his personality and from his person that indicated unto her that if anybody was a man, then this spiritual man is a real man. And that's exactly what the Bible teaches us. Look at Romans chapter 8 and beginning at verse number 1. In Romans chapter 8 and beginning at verse number 1, we look at what the Bible says about a spiritual man. He said, there is not therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yeah. Drop down to verse number 5. The Bible says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit will mind the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they which are in the flesh cannot please God. And that's the reason why if we're going to be real men, we've got to be sensitive to the needs of other people. When we come across folk who are in need of something deeper than what they have as a real man, 
man in the army of the Lord. We've got to administer what they need. We've got to be spiritual. In other words, our walk got to match our talk. We can't just say one thing and then turn around and do something else. The Bible indicates unto us that a spiritual man doesn't have to worry about condemnation because there's no condemnation at all. For a man who walks after the spirit and doesn't walk after the flesh. Oh, when this woman went back to the city, she told the man to come home and see the man with her own two eyes. She had seen a sensitive man. She had seen a spiritual man. And then she had seen a soldier in God's army. Oh, yes, she did. But when she looked at Jesus she wasn't just looking at any simple cadet she was looking at the commander and chief of the army of God she was looking at somebody who had given us marching orders a long time ago to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he that believeth and he is baptized shall be saved this commander and chief has decided to enlist others as soldiers in the army of God. He's our commanding officer and he gives us the Holy Bible as our code of conduct. He has taught us that faith and prayer are, are our weapons of warfare. Right, right. When we got the word of God on our side, we've got a sword that's that will cut coming and going because the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 4 that the word of God chapter 4 verse 12 rather that the word of God is a two-edged sword it pierces even to the dividing of son of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and it is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart when you come on into Jesus army. You can't come up in here like no wimp. You got to have a backbone. You got to be able to be willing to stand up for what's right even against the odds. You got to be ready to face the opposition of the enemy and ready to sit down at the feet of God and be taught by, by the Holy Spirit through the word. You got to be ready to be trained by experience and tried by adversity and be tested by fire. You got to volunteer into this army and you better enlist forever. Don't you ever go AWOL on the Lord but just stay on the battlefield. You can't get out and you better not sell out. Don't you let nobody talk you out. Right, and right. definitely don't let them push you out. Right. You've got to be faithful. You've got to be reliable. You've got to be capable. And you've got to be dependable. When God needs you, you ought to be right there waiting. When God can depend on you, you need to let him know that he can. I'm talking about being a soldier in the army of the Lord. Because we are at war, y'all. Yeah. This is not a battle against the flesh. Because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But we're wrestling against powers and principalities. We're wrestling against rulers of darkness in high places. We're wrestling against some stuff that we cannot see. We're wrestling against some stuff that we cannot touch. We're wrestling against some stuff that we can't get a hold on. And so therefore, 
we got to know how to fight in the army of the Lord because there are some things in this life that are just worth fighting for to set the tone for the future of our children just to make sure that they grow up in an environment where they can have a secure relationship with God and know that in all things God comes first. That's worth fighting for. Having the right to bring my children.